you know how to solve the differential equation x prime equals a times x, where x is a scalar function. In that case, you find x of t equals x0 times e to the power a t, where x0 is the initial condition. But how can you solve the system of differential equations x prime equals a times x when a is a matrix? Actually, this works exactly the same. Let us look into this in this video. Suppose we have a differential equation of the form x prime equals a times x, where a is a matrix, and where x0 equals x0, some initial condition, some initial vector, then x of t equals just the same e to the power a t times x0, and there we have our solution. Why? Well, first check the initial condition. Plugging in t equals 0, we find e to the power 0 of there equals 1 x0, so that's okay. The solution satisfies the initial condition. Does it also satisfy the differential equation? So let's take the ddt of x, ddt of x, and check whether it equals a times x. So ddt of x equals the ddt of the exponent here times x0, because x0 is the initial condition, it does not depend on t, so you can take it out. And the ddt of e to the power a t equals a times e to the power a t times x0, which was already there. This part over here is our x, so we find it was a of x. So indeed, x prime equals a of a times x. But wait a minute, what happened over here? Is this legitimate over here? Because you have some exponent of a matrix, can you just take the derivative in a normal way? Let's check. To be sure, just write down what it means to take e to the power a t. If you take the derivative, we take the derivative of a sum n from 0 to infinity, a t to the power n over n factorial, the Taylor expansion for the exponent as we define the matrix exponent. And then we do something which you would probably do just straight away without thinking, but which is actually kind of fishy. We take the ddt in, we are interchanging two limits. Well, it is legitimate here because a matrix addition is component wise, it's just a normal addition. And uh, e to the power x is uniformly convergent, which means that you can interchange summation and differentiation. So, okay, it is fine, but there is something happening here. You should at least be aware of that. And then we are fine, it's just a time derivative of t to the power n equals n t to the power n minus 1. Be a bit careful with the n equals 0 term, which is actually very easy, because n equals 0, we have a constant over here, so it vanishes. So it's good to start here at 1, because the n equals 0 term vanishes. So we start one spot further. And then we go on. We can simplify a bit. The n over n factorial can be simplified, because n factorial equals n times n minus 1 factorial. So a factor n cancels out. a to the power n equals a times a to the power n minus 1 a times a to the power n minus 1, just leave the t to the power n minus 1. Then change the summation index for m, m equals n minus 1, so we get the m factorial, m and m over there, and m starts at 0, just the a can be taken out of the sum because it does not depend on the summation index. And then we are done, because lo and behold, over here we got back our e to the power a t, with an additional matrix a in front. So indeed, the ddt of e to the power a t equals a times e to the power a t. So all steps are fine, which means that over here we have our solution of our system of linear differential equations.